Uh, thank you very much for being here um, on a rainy day uh, in Bombay. I, I put up this slide because it reminded me uh, when I was 18, uh, the generation gap was, I really thought my dad was from the prehistoric era. He couldn't understand me at all. Um, but this is moving really rapidly, right? It's not anymore about your kids or your nieces or your nephews. Um, just look at the workforce around you, the millennials, the Generation Z. Things are just moving so rapidly um, that I feel, um, uh, even at the cost of sounding almost like I'm 100 years old, um, that things you either have to, as, as Marty said, move or die. Angry Birds, a brand, um, when it was launched, um, just the fact that it came out of a digital medium, it took retailers in India at least three seasons to even recognize it. They said that it's impossible that a brand could come out of digital and become so big. And we kept telling them, it is massive in the United States, it's massive all over the world, but they uh, just were not willing to recognize it at all. So we were three seasons late. There was tons of piracy, and lots of the business was lost as a result of which. And since we're talking about my family, I just wanted to say, uh, one of the things that mom would always say is that put your head up, put your, uh, uh, and don't look down at people, but always keep your head up and just look at what the world is like now. Everybody is looking down. Uh, just while I was speaking, I was just looking at everybody looking at mobile phones, right? But the reality is that we live in a digital world. And though we may dish and hate a lot of the parts of the digital world and what it's doing to us, it's a reality that we have to embrace. And one of the, uh, I could spend hours uh, talking about millennials and what I think of them and, and uh, what I think about this digital era, but the very strong, potent thing, which is the trend number one, which I want to talk to you about, is digital brands. The reality is that if you have a creation or you know what to create, thanks to uh, digital uh, you can Im immediately embrace an audience. And if the two connect, there's magic. Um, and I want to talk to you about two of the brands. I was really surprised. And, and when Marty talks about trends around the world, uh, every time I go to the United States, I just think that that's far, far, far away from what we could uh, be seeing in a few years. But what I'm talking about is here and now. So the numbers that you see, 200 billion views, 96 million subscribers, countless hours of content, this is non-celebrity, not coming out of any movies. Uh, people on YouTube who have been able to link with a fan following uh, and, um, and have a fan a base which is embracing it. So I want to talk to you about two of these case studies, right? Not really case studies as much as what I saw in the West. Now this kid, he's seven years old uh, in the United States. And what he does is this. His channel has about 20 million subscribers. His videos have generated more than 30 billion views. And all he does is he sits down and talks about toys. He walks through aisles of retail and talks about toys. And I don't even want to get into the fact of what Richie Rich does and what his parents and how manipulative they are or whatever it is. The idea is that it works. And it's huge. And this year, in, two, in fact, in 2018, he was listed as the richest guy coming from YouTube, making $22 million. Uh, $22 million? Yes, $22 million. Uh, and I, it's unimaginable in the past, right, that you could be actually sitting, reviewing something, and having a fan base. My second, uh, which I want, how many of you in India know of Choo Choo TV? Wow. That's... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad for that, because uh, a guy called Vinod Chandar, based out of Chennai, to regale his daughter when his daughter was born, put up a video that he created on YouTube, uh, went away, took care of his baby, came back, looked at the videos. There has 200,000 people who had watched it. So he and his four friends decided that, what the hell are we doing? We've been doing this outsourcing job to the United States for the longest time. Let's ditch that, and let's set up a business. So they put up more videos, and as a result of that, this is Choo Choo TV. Um, Choo Choo TV has now 10 channels, 20, uh, 39 million subscribers. This is more than Disney. Uh, this is more than most of the brands that we revere and we just look up to. 
Um, a person like me who comes from the world of animation, I'm sorry to say I was such an idiot. Because I looked at the animation and I said, oh no, this is not Pixar quality. Who gives a damn whether it's Pixar quality? The fact is that these guys hit 39 million subscribers. People love it. Um, and um, I'm sorry, I just want one step further. 25 billion views. And I'm very proud to say that this year and going into next year, this brand would be in 2,000 stores across Walmart and Target in the United States um, across three categories of products. And this is largely based on the fact that the world embraced it before India did. Um, and this is thanks to digital. Uh, Lily Singh, if uh, most of the millennials will know Lily Singh, she, she is of Indian origin, based out of Canada. Uh, she has a show. Uh, she um, on television now. She's written a book. Um, fantastic content, which connects to that audience, and a very strong merchandising program. Boo and Bam. Now, this guy is a, is a fantastic story. He was in the office the other day, and what was really cool was that whatever Boo and does, he does on his own. He has an iPhone, and he shoots everything. He scripts it, he edits it, he puts it together, and when he made it big on YouTube and made a lot of money, he decided to get a professional crew. And he did this very polished piece of content that he threw out, and the consumers threw it right back, saying that doesn't work. So his perspective was that every time he's tried to make it spanking beautiful um, Hollywood style, it doesn't work for his audience. So he's come back to doing it in his style, has a phenomenal audience, um, he's got one of his uh, friends doing his merchandising program, and it's successful. And, and, and this is what we've got to be looking at more and more, these niches that come out of digital. Uh, Baby Shark, big story now in the United States. Um, in the music world, uh, Boyce Avenue, for people who know that uh, they basically sing other people's songs and sing it beautifully with their walks, um, uh, Pentatonics, all of these are brands which have been built out of YouTube. Um, some more of these brands, most of these people we wouldn't know, but they have large audiences. They're talking to them specifically, and um, they're lapping it up, and they're loving it. And through this, once this dialogue is happening, is there a possibility of commerce? Absolutely it is. Um, yeah, but, but the fact is that our so-called traditional retailers may have absolutely no idea of the existence of these people. But they do exist, they're thriving, and they're wonderful. So is digital content, is my question really, is the new brand opportunity, are digital influencers the new celebrity? Um, now, anyone who's got Instagram and can boost and do some beautiful pictures are not necessarily influencers uh, or celebrities. I just believe that they need to have a fan base which they're talking to and a fan base that embraces what they do and their products. The second, again, and keeping with my theme of generation gap, right? So when I'm a big fan of comic books, and so um, uh, I used to keep collecting all the DC comics and reading it. So the, 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 what would translate its comics became movies, and then movies became toys. So there is two kinds of franchise building towards longevity, right? One is whereby you, something becomes a hit, and then you decide to do some merchandise with it, right? Um, so what falls in these categories really is stuff like Game of Thrones, great books, never known became a HBO series, um, and then merchandise started coming out. And now with the last season of, and, and, and you saw the kind of merchandise and the kind of collaborations were just phenomenal, from Johnny Walker uh, to Oreo, et cetera. But I still, um, I'm not saying good or bad, but I still say that this is typically the way Bollywood, for example, operates, which is that, uh, oh, so it's a hit now, can I stick it on a T-shirt? Um, it's not with any thought which has been put together at the pre-production stage itself to say, hey, can I conjure this world into products before I even go about and really make the movie? Because um, So there's no good or bad. Uh, the United States is so sophisticated that they can still do that as an afterthought and build a beautiful story. Uh, the second is my favorite topic is Harry Potter. Um, Harry Potter, when it came out many years back, uh, it was a phenomenon, a uh, sleeper hit which became massive. But now when you walk around schools, the 9 and 10 year olds are sidestepping this entire world of Hardy Boys and Nancy Drews and 
um, uh, all of that to get directly into Harry Potter. And once you get into Harry Potter, you're not getting back. Um, why has this become such a massive phenomenon is an intersection between the fact that the people who read it first are now parents, uh, and they are uh, encouraging their kids to read it. And second is the fact that there is no, uh, it still resonates beautifully uh, with the audience, and it's becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. So with this as a franchise, they've been able to extend it over some 50, 20 years, 15 to 20 years now, and it's just becoming bigger and stronger. But then I talk about franchises, which at the, before Disney took over Marvel, the only brand for Marvel that we knew of was Spider-Man. And now look at the universe that they've conjured. And this is what I, I was talking about. Is there a possibility that you can actually conjure up this world and figure out prequels and sequels and put merchandise in the midst of that is the question. So we've seen some bits of where, uh, whether it's with Bahubali and, and, and a fairly decent job done in India uh, with it, or in the case of Rohit Shetty and what he's doing with his franchises of movies. Uh, Singham, for example, is now Little Singham into a series. Um, uh, there is. Um, sequels of his various movies and there is a plan towards building some kind of a franchise with it. Uh, this is what we would see more and more, I think, and hope um, that it becomes a little more long range rather than short term uh, in its planning and scope uh, with franchises in India. So with the legacy of Ramayana and Mahabharata and, and, and you know, we're the king of stories, uh, can we um, build more longevity to our stories is this my wish really and, I, and I'm just throwing it out there as one of the trends. Third is sports. Now this is my favorite thing. I, I would have a problem and I, and I hate to say it for people who love golf, right? I had a problem with golf with the fact that it's not performance led, right? So for me, any sport is about skill meets physical exertion and then there's some bit of competition. But what do I talk to the digital era, right? Uh, sports to them means this. And can we fault it? I mean, a bunch of people, I sit around and play a game, then I play it with two people, and then I play it with 100 people. But is that a reality? Damn, yes, it's a reality. It's, it's happening at a uh, college and school level, getting to a, a, a city level, district level. Um, and a state at, at a state level, and there's a big esports culture that's coming up in India, and it's just a matter of time before it is going to be a big phenomenon. So I'm going to also, just like Marty, talk about two games, Fortnite and PUBG. Fortnite now is in a ton of physical products for Monopoly, um, uh, Win Magic in uh, does toys in India, and their products. Um, they they're also putting out the Fort, Fortnite products out there, and, and it's a bold world, because uh, when you talk to a normal retailer, they don't know what the hell Fortnite's all about. But just to give you some numbers, 250 billion Fortnite users worldwide. Uh, Marshmello is uh, an artist. Um, and, and usually when artists uh, want to break a song, uh, they would do it differently. They would look to a music label to put out a video. Marshmello decided to put his song um, and launch his song within a Fortnite game. And he had 10 million millennials actually uh, get in to check the song out. And it's such a cool way of promoting stuff. $300 million was spent every month on digital merchandise. Um, and physical mer merchandise, as I was saying, is now available at retail. Um, PUBG, everybody knows it in India. It's taken such a big rap uh, just for all the things, for all the bad publicity. But if you look at 250 million people are fans of PUBG, but there's about 50 million of them in India. Uh, there is an um, eSports competition that's happening in India this month, and the winner gets 1.5 crores, which is not a small amount of money for somebody who's 20 years old, I guess. Um, and licensed merchandise of this game is also available uh, everywhere at retail. So with India becoming the second largest smartphone com country, uh, is eSports going to be the new sport um, and where, where we must focus, or should retailers and licensees be looking at this as an important niche? So Marty spoke about experiences, and this is becoming, again, uh, it's about the fact that earlier you would talk about my product and ask uh, and do a lot of advertising related to it. Now a lot of brands are looking at experiences with the intention of inducing trial and pulling people in. So 
I just wanted to show you some of them. Uh, Marriott in, in, in uh, Cartoon Network did a very interesting one at Marriott where they branded uh, the breakfast with DC um, comic books and their characters. Uh, there's a Cartoon Network restaurant in Taiwan. There is a DC restaurant in Singapore. There's a, the wonderful share with her music and her movies has a branded um, apartment uh, not, not apartments, rooms which are created in Sofitel. All of this is to draw consumers in and can we uh, look at more of these opportunities in India to, uh, to bring consumers through the door. Primark with Harry Potter, Tokyo, Hello Kitty, uh, the Disney store with, with retail. And finally, my last leg is just about India. Uh, barring people like, I mean, like Wendell who's here and he's a phenomenal design aesthetic which is uh, you know looked up to over the years basically in India everything is about uh, we're world famous in India about what comes from the world to India right so in the licensing story uh, everything that is coming from America on the UK are what is licensed in India and we've not been able to evolve our own design aesthetic so if you look at the Japanese big fans of all the manga that comes out of there Pokemon Digimon um, Doraemon, they are not from Kerala, they are all from Japan. And these brands have a fantastic aesthetic and it's been embraced around the world. I was surprised when I was talking to my wonderful millennial bunch of kids who work in my office that K-pop is big in India. So I thought it was about northeast of India or it's a small pocket of India. But there's a lot of them going in for these concerts um, um, so, so whether it's the concerts, whether it's the, the content which is movies being made from Korean movies, series, all of this exists and, 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 and India is embracing it. In a country full of color culture, can we create our own design aesthetic and share it to the world? This is my wish and I want this to become a reality. Amen.